Hi everyone, it's Caitlin, one of your ULAs this semester for genetics, and today I'm here to go over a practice problem about the migration equation that you reviewed in your lecture. So our problem today reads like this. In College Park, there are two populations of squirrels where individuals either carry the sneaky or the clumsy allele. 80 squirrels live on South Campus, and the frequency of the sneaky allele is 0.7. 100 squirrels live on North Campus, and the frequency of the sneaky allele there is 0.5. During this quarantine, 20 squirrels from North Campus have migrated to South Campus in search of food closer to Route 1. So what will the frequency of the sneaky allele be in South Campus population when we return to campus in the fall? If and when. <laughs> so, in order to start this, I'm going to go ahead and draw a diagram. Personally, I think diagramming these types of problems out is really helpful, especially when you're trying to keep track of a bunch of different numbers. So, this is a good tactic that I use. So over here, this circle is going to represent North Campus. I'm also going to color code it, just so that way it's easier to keep track of everything. And I'm going to write the numbers associated with this population inside the circle. So I'm going to write 100 individuals, and then the frequency of the sneaky allele is 0 0.5. And I'm going to switch colors. And over here, I'm drawing this circle. This circle represents South Campus. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write the numbers inside. So we have 80 individuals, and then we have a frequency of 0 0.7. And then in terms of our migrating individuals, I'm just going to draw a little arrow indicating that they're moving and then we have 20 individuals and again the frequency is 0 0.5 since they're coming from the North Campus population. Now let's talk about the migration formula. I'm just going to write it out here there so we can go over the individual parts of the formula and identify what numbers belong where. So we have Q1 prime equals Q2 times m plus q1 times 1 minus m. So in terms of ident identifying which parts of this equation are what, this q1 prime is going to be our new frequency in our south campus population since that is our focal population, that's the one we're looking at. q1 is just our old frequency in our south campus population. And then q2 is our North Campus frequency, because that is our secondary population that we're drawing individuals from. Now, you look at this and you're, you might be wondering, what exactly is M? What is that doing in the equation? So let's talk a little bit more about M. M may sometimes be confusing because it's not necessarily written out for you in terms of in the problem, they probably won't give you what m is. You're going to have to pop, uh, calculate that. So m is actually a proportion. It's a ratio. In this scenario, it's the number of migrants divided by the new total population. So all of the individuals after the migrant individuals have come over. So if we look back, to our little diagram, our really helpful diagram, we're going to see that we have 20 migrant individuals, and then if we add the 20 to the 80, we'll be able to get our new total population. So writing that out, that is going to be 20 over 20 plus 80, which gives us 0 0.2. Now, you'll also notice in the formula there is a 1 minus m. So if we do all the math, 1 minus m is 0 0.8. So now we got to put it all together. Now we got to put all the numbers where they belong. So we're going to start with setting up our equation. This is the most important part because you have to remember which numbers go where. Remember which population is your Q1 and which population is your Q2. So remember, we're going to be referencing our diagram that we drew in the first step. 
So let's take a quick look again at that. So we're going to write our, out our equation. So it's q2 times m plus q1 times 1 minus m. Now we're going to start filling in the numbers. So our first number is going to be q2. q2 is 0 0.5 because q2 is our north, prop, north campus population. Our m, we went back and we calculated that. Looking at our paper, we find that it is 0 0.2. So we're going to put that in plus Q1, which is our old frequency in South Campus. So we look at, back at our diagram, and we find that it is 0 0.7, so we're gonna put that in. And then we have one minus M, again, we calculated that before. We look at that, we find that it is 0 0.8, so we're gonna put that in. When we multiply those, we get 0 0.1, and 0 0.56, we add them together, and our Q1 prime comes out to be 0 0.66. So 0 0.66 is the new frequency of the sneaky allele in the South Campus population after the 20 individuals from North Campus migrated down to South Campus. So that's that's in just in this scenario. So had any more individuals or any less individuals come down, that would be different. Now, there's a way we could have talked about this and theorized what the correct answer would look like without doing any math. So let's get theoretical. Granted, what I'm about to talk about will not give you an exact answer, but it will help you determine what a range of correct answers might look like. So we look at this and we know that our frequencies are 0 0.5 and we have 0 0.7. And let's compare them. So we know that 0 0.5 is less than 0 0.7. So if we think about it, individuals moving from the lower frequency population to the higher frequency population, you would probably expect the frequency in the population to decrease. Because if you think about it, you're kind of finding a happy medium. You're kind of finding the middle. So in the middle of 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 is going to be in the 60s somewhere, which will obviously decrease from 0 0.7. So if you're looking at this in a multiple choice kind of answer way, you might be able to eliminate some of the answers just based on this logic. So this is really, really helpful if you're trying to go quickly through multiple, multiple choice without doing any of the math. So I suggest you try to use this before you try to dive in and do all of the math. So yeah, great, fantastic tactic. Only use it though when you're running at a time because it's always better to do the math and check yourself. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching this video and I hope I cleared some stuff up for you in terms of migration because it's one of the more confusing topics in this last section. So, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I wish you the best of luck on studying for your final. You guys got this. Thanks for watching, and bye.